All right, so today's class, we are exploring the nervous system. Um, so on the right here, we have um, some basic parts of the nervous system. So the nervous system includes the brain, it includes the spinal cord, and all the nerves um, throughout the whole body. All right, and when I talk about a stimulus, we talked about this in the beginning of the unit. Um, it was one of the characteristics of life where a living thing can respond to a stimulus. So a stimulus would be a change in your environment. It can occur in many forms. For example, change in pressure, in change in heat, in cold, so temperature, um, change in light, sound, or body chemistry. And the stimulus, it can be external, like outside the body, or it can be internal as well, which is would be inside the body. So what the nervous system does is it monitors and responds to these stimuli. Okay, so we did look at this before a little bit. Um, this is a cell of the nervous system and it's called a neuron. So the nervous system is made up of nervous tissue. The nervous tissue is made up of these specialized cells called neurons. So they're very branched out, um, very long um, looking. And that's important because they need to pass information from one cell to another. Um, so the brain, the spinal cord, and all the nerves are made of neurons. So a neuron, it, it will receive messages from these small branches of the cell. So these branches here, those are called dendrites. All right, there's the dendrites. Um, here is the cell body, and inside we have the nucleus of the cell. All right, so the incoming messages get passed from the dendrites through the cell body to the axon. So this here is the axon, and then we have the nerve endings. So the axon, it's a long extension of the cell that ends in very small branches, and what it's doing is it's carrying impulses away from the cell body um, to its branches and the branches will then transmit the message to the dendrites of neighboring cells. So there will be another cell um, here. So the message or the impulse is being carried um, from one cell to the next. All right, so in this diagram here, we can see two of them. This is one cell here, and then it's, it's very close to the next cell right here, very close in proximity. So this is showing the structure of two neural neurons. It's showing the path of a message from one neuron to the next. All right, so again, um, this is the cell body here. We have the nucleus. These branches are called dendrites. Then we have the axon, the nerve endings here, and very, in, very close proximity to the next cell. Um, so here we have the dendrites again, the cell body and the nucleus, and then the axon. And that is how um, messages are passed from one neuron to the next. All right, so the nervous system is organized um, in these two categories. So the first category is the central nervous system, also called the CNS. And the CNS the central nervous system consists of just the brain and the spinal cord. All right, so shown here in yellow is the CNS, the brain, and the spinal cord. So that's the central nervous system. And then we have the PNS, which is the peripheral nervous system. It stands for PNS. All right, and we can see it all in green. Okay, so these are all the cranial or the head um, nerves as well as all the spinal nerves and these nerves travel to all parts of the body So Like I said the central nervous system is made up of the brain and the spinal cord The peripheral nervous system is composed of two types of neurons. There are sensory neurons and there are motor neurons so sensory neurons they're going to carry information from the body to the central nervous system. And the motor neurons are going to carry information from the central nervous system to the muscles or the organs. 
All right, further looking at the peripheral system, the peripheral nervous system, the PNS is subdivided into two systems. So there is the somatic nervous system. This controls voluntary responses. So these are the conscious conscious control you have over your responses to stimuli. For example, if you hear a noise and you decide whether or not you're going to turn your head to see what caused it, that's under conscious control. So that's your somatic nervous system. And then there's the autonomic nervous system. This controls automatic responses in the body. All right, so certain stimuli, um, the brain will respond to those stimuli unconsciously. So for example, things like the heart rate, the size of your pupils when they dilate, for example, your blood pressure, uh, breathing rate, um, the peristalsis that's occurring in your digestive system. Those are all happening automatically. You don't have conscious control. All right, so make sure you know the difference between the somatic nervous system, that's voluntary, autonomic, that's involuntary, it's happening automatically. All right, and then looking at the central nervous system, we're going to look at the brain a little bit. So the brain is part of the central nervous system, and so was the spinal cord. So the brain receives a stimuli from the outside world gathered by your sense organs. So the eyes, the ears, the mouth, the nose, and the skin. The brain will also receive internal stimuli from the body itself. And then the brain will react to the stimuli and it will send messages to the appropriate body parts. All right, so let's look at the brain a little bit more. So the brain is generally divided into three main sections. There is the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the medulla. And um, those are the three um, main parts of the brain. Um, the spinal cord connects the brain to the PNS, and it acts as a highway for messages between the brain and the body. All right, so the central, the spinal cord, sorry, is connecting the brain to the peripheral nervous system. All right, and that's how um, that connection is made um, for messages between the brain and the body. There are always, um, sorry, there are interneurons as well. And these are neurons in the central nervous system that connect sensory neurons to motor neurons. All right, so just looking at here a diagram of functions of the brain. Um, so we have the cerebrum, um, the cerebellum, and then the medulla here. All right, and then we can see all the different um, functions of the brain at those different um, areas. All right, next we're just going to talk about the reflex response. Um, so in some situations, like I was talking about previously, is, for example, like burning, um, burning your finger or something on the stovetop or something like that. So in some situations, sensory and motor neurons may work together without involving the brain. So this is an automatic response by the nervous system to an external stimulus. So for example, you accidentally touch a hot stove. The stimulus is going to be the intense heat. So the sensory nerves in the hand, they're going to react to the stimulus by sending a nerve impulse to the spinal cord. Then the interneurons will relay the message to the motor neurons and the impulse will travel quickly to the arm muscles, which will quickly contract to remove your hand from the stove. So that's a reflex. Um, and the reason it's done that way is because it's going to take a longer time to send a message to the brain, and by then you might be burnt even more. So that's where the interneurons um, come into play. So the sensory neurons are, will still send a message to the brain, but by the time the message gets there, and your brain decides um, to change your facial expression, um, have you cry out in pain, um, by then your hand is already off the stove. So these reflexes are, are basically protecting us from injury by reducing the time it takes to react to harmful stimuli. All right, so this is just showing the reflex response. 
So you touch the hot stove, we have the sensory neurons there in the fingertip, they send that message to the spinal cord. The spinal cord, there's um, those interneurons, and those interneurons will quickly send a message um, to your arm to contract um, and get off that hot stove. All right, and at the same time, a message is still being sent to the brain. Um, but it's there to quickly respond. Um, here's another one um, hitting the knee. So at your knee here, um, there's a reflex there. Um, so hitting the kneecap there. Um, so again, the message will be sent to the spinal cord, um, to the interneuron, and then um, your, your leg will basically kick out. All right, so we'll pause here and watch a couple videos here on the nervous system. So just in conclusion, um, the major body systems that we talked about were the digestive, respiratory, circulatory, nervous, and excretory. So the digestive system breaks down food, absorbs food particles, eliminates wastes. Respiratory exchanges oxygen and carbon dioxide. Um, sorry, going back to the digestive system, um, we talked about um, we talked about physical digestion and chemical digestion, um, and we talked about all the organs that are involved in the digestive system. Um, same thing with respiratory. Um, we talked about the lungs, the bronchi, bronchioles, alveoli. Circulatory system um, circulates blood, transports food particles, dissolved gases and other materials. So in the circulatory system, we talked about the heart. We talked about blood vessels. We also talked about the composition of the blood. Uh, the nervous system, um, which we just talked about today, um, controls and coordinates the body activities, senses internal and external changes. And then the excretory, which we looked at last class, which regulates blood composition and excretes waste fluids. So an excretory or urinary system, we talked about the kidneys, um, the bladder, ureters, and the urethra. All right, so just in conclusion, we'll watch this last video here on the human body. <laughs> 